Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, it makes sense. I think a lot of my fantasies now revolve around me doing less. So because, well, because in porn, I'm so active. I'm basically doing cardio. I'm on top. Yeah. I'm riding. I'm, you know, getting fucked upside down. I do so much. So I just want to get tied up now. I just want to get tied yep, up. Yep, yep, yep. How, how do I become a bottom? Yeah. How do I be fucked? <laughs> like, so, how does someone fuck me and I do it's less like of the It's like a comedian doing crowd work. We're like, what are you, can you do this for me? <laughs> It's like, can you, where are you from? Like, that's the same, same. I've done a lot of work up here tonight. I'm the same. I've just turned 40 now. I'm like, what do you do, sir? Uh, but so when it comes to getting into, when did you decide, okay, this is something I want to do for a living? Okay, so that's going back to all the bullying and the slut shaming that I experienced in high school. So pornography was the first place I saw women being celebrated for mm. fucking a bunch of people. I mean, you know, it's been, it's it's Hedy Lamar is someone I'm obsessed with. She was a, um, uh, what was the year? Let me find... Hedy Lamar, who um, has now been linked to uh, uh, being fundamentally, uh, I don't want to say she invented Wi-Fi, but fundamentally involved in the, the invention of Wi-Fi. Um, she was an actress who was Austrian, and she did a movie called Ecstasy in 1933, and it showed her having an orgasm on camera. Mm -hmm. And she was so publicly shamed and disgraced that she moved to America, became very famous in America, da da da, da. I don't think anyone wanted to even know, I don't think people running Hollywood wanted anyone to know that was even on the menu. Mm. <laughs> orgasms yeah. just don't that's not even a, that's, that's a myth that's really fucked up so could men orgasm always yeah wow yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really wild. misogynistic yeah wild. yeah wild so so i never saw sex being pleasurable to women mm. it was always just like marriage 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 which yeah. every disney movie every rom-com you know it was all about saving yourself for marriage it was never like enjoying sex well that's why porn was so incredible for me it was like this progressive space where i was like oh wow women are allowed to have fun be naked fuck men fuck women and they're celebrated for that rather than criticized for it so i was like at 14 i was like that is what i want to do and what was it you remember the first porn you saw i don't okay so i saw a couple different things um i don't remember the name of the movie but i saw some really weird movie <laughs> with my with my my soon-to-be boyfriend and his friend um, where these male performers were wearing lamp they were naked and they were wearing lampshades over their heads I'm in of, yeah and they end up getting their dick sucked and fucking it was very odd I don't know what movie that was and then the the thing <laughs> still never found it to this day <laughs> still have a thing for lampshades no <laughs> Um, but the, the the thing I remember the most was I had this penthouse letters and there was this blonde woman laying there covered in lace and pearls and she had this huge smile on her face and she was looking directly down the lens, just like staring into mm. your soul with this big smile on her face. And I was like, fuck yes, I'm going to be happy in porn. Like, this is where mm. I can be myself. This is where I can express myself. This is where I can be me and everyone's going to love me for it. I can express and explore sex in a safe place with like-minded peers. So, yeah, 14, I was like, I'm going to be in porn. That is in wild. Then I spent the next four years researching it, figuring out what companies could be safe to work with because obviously there were still a lot of myths surrounding the industry about it, just like being a place where, you know, all the women are pimped out and drug abused and what. So I, I did my research. Like, mm. I was really serious about figuring out how I could get you into this industry. You approached it as a business. I did approach it as a business. Did you research any porn stars that came before you? That's actually one of the reasons I ended up working. So the first company that I worked with was the score group. And they were flying in models. So they're based in Miami, Florida, but they were flying in models from around the world. And I was like reading, this is, at the time it was magazines. They had DVDs and stuff too, but it was like magazines were the easiest things for me to get my hands on. And they kept coming back, these models. I was like, they'd fly them into Florida. They'd fly them into the Bahamas or they'd fly them into Europe. And I was like, oh, here they are in, in Prague. And then like a year later, they're in the UK. I'm like, well, these models wouldn't keep flying and shooting with this company if they were treating them poorly. That was, that was I mean... I, that was all the research that I could that yeah, I had. Yeah, but I yeah. was like, I went into it with a, the, as much. Now there's so much. And were you so, right? I was right. Okay. Yeah, I was, like, right. I, I, I was right. Trust me. I, I'm like, that could have gone either way. Because I'm like, yeah. you moved to LA and you're like, well, this Harvey Weinstein guy. All these people wouldn't work with him if he True. was really raping people. <laughs> Seems like they just keep winning Oscars. Well, so. this was this was with the knowledge that I could garner as a fourteen-year-old. Now, like yeah. that, you can listen to a bunch of podcasts where porn stars talk about their experience. At the time, that was the best information that I could garner at the time, and thankfully, I was right. Did you tell your?